Hey folks, it's Shane from Performance TV. Today we're taking a look at our new project car. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put electric motors into fun or interesting cars. Um, and in the last episode, I introduced our new project car, which I'm sitting in. Um, didn't have much time in that video because I want, didn't want to make it too long, but I did want to introduce the car, why I was doing it, and kind of what the plan was. But I want to use this video to, to take a look at the car itself, um, let you guys see what it's like, what's already been done to it, um, what hasn't been done, and yeah, give you a little indication of where we're going to go with this. So yeah, let's take a look. So as I mentioned in the last video, when the car turned up, uh, it was complete. It, it was a, all the parts were there, pretty much. Um, it had been painted, freshly, um, kind of media blasted, primered, painted, a nice black paint job, and yeah, all the components were there, but they were just basically inside the car. Basically, there was kind of some bits of plywood over you know the passenger seat and the rear seats in the back area just to keep everything secure and the driver's seat was available uh, the engine was running just about and the handbrake worked that's about it um, <laughs> there was a sign stuck to the steering wheel that said use handbrake um, basically if you put pump the brakes nothing worked so I guess my first job with the car was to strip everything out, um, take all the things out of there and, you know, see exactly where things were. And I'm kind of going to take that approach with this video. I'm going to go back through the car, but in the order that I've done things to it. So we've had a, you know, a look around the outside, a bit of a look at the interior, just a high level. And I'll go back now and focus on the bits where I've actually done some work. Um, where things were challenging and that sort of stuff. Let's uh, let's go take a look. All right, so we're going to start the review down the back of the car. Basically, when this car was being put back together by my dad, it was in a garage that was kind of too short for it. Um, so the tail end was sticking out, and even though it had a cover over it most of the time, um, the back did get a bit of a beating even after the paint had been put on it. So um, I had a little bit of rust to deal with. Let me show you. So where's the worst of the rust? On the outside was along here basically this panel where the um, just below the window and effectively a huge big hole had rusted through just here um, and I ended up having to base cut an entire section out uh, to get back to good metal weld it back in and then weld something in as well to create this little lip which you can't really see but which the um, the hood goes up in under um, the rest of it was more or less okay this um, rear boot lid's fine. There is some rust down here, um, which I've kind of patched up to stop it getting any worse and painted over to just make it secure, but that's gonna to need to be 
sand it back and, and read on or if it's too bad you know you can get these things similar with the rear valens so that was the worst of the rust on the outside the things weren't quite as good inside so in behind me is the rear footwell and that also happens to be where the battery lives uh, underneath the rear seat that is an area on beetles that is very prone to rust um, basically if the battery leaks even the slightest bit uh, the acid from the lead acid battery will uh, do a number on the on any paint protection that that's in there and gradually the things worsen um, especially if there's any sort of leak on the windows here that lets rain in and that will uh, yeah water pools underneath the seat and it eats away at it so I had to rip up well the carpets weren't attached but I had to get take up all the sound deadening um, the basically tar surface that was there and check out what things were like underneath the uh, battery that was not a nice surprise what looked like just a you know four inch long by half an inch or maybe one inch wide hole actually turned into um, probably a one foot square hole uh, as I tried to cut back to find good metal uh, going at it with a kind of wire, wire wheel and that sort of thing just kept on exposing little rust hole after rust hole and yeah basically had to cut the entire bit out uh, create a new patch panel um, from similarly strength metal weld that in weld in a new little brace for the battery and then um, basically seam seal and fill in that entire section and that was a similar story back here in the luggage compartment where the um, on the same side uh, yeah a little rust patch had had formed down on the on the face of it and that had rusted through so again I had to to cut that out and re um, redo it I could then focus on prepping the um, the floor pan and the chassis basically um, you know the, the beetle is just a, a, a body that sits on top of a a chassis which has a central spine that is the um, transmission tunnel and floor pans on that and actually once you get all the interior out you've got access to to most of that so I there were no carpets in there was sound deadening kind of tar based stuff all over the place um, and I used a combination of heat, hot and cold to basically get that off uh, the entire floor pan um, then put rust converter over everything uh, which is this cool blue color but it um, yeah just made sure any bits of rust that I hadn't managed to grind off or anything weren't going to get any worse and then we were able to primer over that cover it with uh, a two-pack epoxy um, paint and with that that painted um, I could then look at introducing some more modern sound ending I've gone nuts with this um, probably too far <laughs> But I figured while I had everything out, I might as well give it a go. So there's a couple of bits where it's coming out um, where I'm going to have to re-upholster it. So I'll show you there what I've done. So this is the passenger footwell. Um, I'm going to ultimately probably end up pulling this carpet out because I want to put speakers in here. So I'm not too worried that it's kind of lifting just here. But you can see what I've done um, with the sound deadening. So what we've got here... And the sound ending itself is actually held on pretty well. Um, got the carpets obviously as the, the outermost layer. Behind that we've got the modern equivalent of mass loaded vinyl. Behind that we've got some um, foam and then behind that we've actually got the kind of sound deadening panels that you put on on the bare metal just to, to reduce the resonance. I know sound is going to come into this car, it's a convertible. Um, but I don't want it coming through from the from the ground and I think we've got that pretty much covered here so with that done we could then start to focus on getting the interior into the car um, you know what let's have a bit of a look at it 
a little bit dusty at the moment, I haven't done much work in here, there are a few cobwebs, but I hope you'll forgive me that. So as you can see, the interior is actually in pretty good condition. The dash isn't cracked, it needs a needs a bit of a, a clean up and maybe just a, some sort of recoloring, but there's no kind of cracking in the, in the dash, probably from living the majority of its life in Ireland rather than down in the warmth of Italy. Um, the interior obviously isn't complete. You, you'll have seen there are a few kind of trim pieces missing. Um, I made my own little door pulls here because I couldn't find the proper ones. I've now found those so they'll go back on. Um, you know, the, the bits and pieces for that are all in a in a box that I have in the garage. So the interior is pretty much there. Um, I haven't really done any major modifications to it. The main one you'll have noticed has been the steering wheel. This obviously is not a um, standard VW Beetle steering wheel. This is a you know, it's a pretty small one actually in terms of aftermarket ones. It's one of the smaller ones you can get. But this is one that I actually got for my old Beetle. Um, so this was originally on my one that I built when I was like 17 and used it. Um, my dad sent it across with, with this car. Uh, it's not that I don't like the traditional Beetle steering wheels. I actually think they're really cool. They are just really big and I have long legs and I end up sitting having to drive bow-legged if I use the standard steering wheel. It's not totally impossible, but it's not comfortable for long journeys. Um, and these cars are light enough, you know, that having to having to use a smaller steering wheel, even without the power steering, is not actually too bad. Um, you know, not as light as a modern car, but it's fine for, for maneuvering. And once you're on the road, it, it's absolutely not a problem at all. So that's the major uh, thing I've done here. And um, one other item that I've done is this little button here, and I'll show you what that does um, in a little while. And uh, no, it's not an ejector seat. So with the interior in place, um, my next job was really around getting the car maneuverable. Um, so I guess around, that was probably around the time I got the Porsche, and I wanted to be in a position where I could move the cars in and out of the garage as I needed to do things with them. Um, so I did some work on the brakes and more or less got them working but there was a lot of play in the the front wheels so i started looking at the cost of new components new bearings um new drums and i was going to probably replace the um the brake shoes as well and it wasn't going to cost me all that much less to buy all those components as it would to buy a disc brake kit so i decided decided to buy a disc brake kit um I'm not going to take the wheels off now, but I did actually record some footage when I was doing it. Um, didn't know for sure if I was going to put the car on the channel at that point, but I figured it was a job. I might as well look at it.
So we got the car converted to disc brakes on the front, still got the standard drums in the rear, and uh, those brakes actually work now. So I can put my foot on the pedal and it stops, which is great. While I had the brakes off, the other thing I decided to do was to lower the front suspension. Uh, the Beatles in general, and the 1303 in particular, has a very uh, lanky stance. It looks really tall on its wheels. Um, and you know, that was necessary with the quality of roads that were going around, especially on a car that was sold the world over um, and ended up in you know all sorts of different places. But with modern smooth roads, you can have the car a little bit closer to the ground. So yes, there is a whole load of junk in there. Um, parts, basically, that I still haven't fit. And I'll tell you a story about this in a moment. But what I wanted to show you was what I've done in here. So here is a winch electric windshield washer kit uh, for the Beetle. So most people will not find the concept of electric windshield washing or windshield washers that exciting. But if you're a Beetle owner, you'll understand. The normal Beetle washing assembly on the classics um, has your bottle of washer fluid you know, sitting here, uh, one pipe going up to the, um, the kind of washer nozzles and the other one connecting to your spare wheel. And basically it uses the air pressure from your spare wheel to push the water out through the, the nozzle. And I don't know about you, but I quite like my spare wheel to be pumped up uh, when I have an issue. And also I don't have a spare wheel at the moment, so it wasn't really working. I do have tire weld though. That's nearly the same, isn't it? But yeah, uh, this guy basically connects to that little red button on the dash. And when you press it, it sends water up through this pipe and out the nozzles. Um, I still have to fully make sure everything's fit in, but that, uh, yeah, I think that works pretty well. And you can still see the remainder of the old uh, Volkswagen color code. So the other major job that I've undertaken on this build is this hood. So. As I mentioned before, the reason why I ended up with this car was because it suffered an engine fire a good few years ago. Um, that was the reason it had to be resprayed, that was the reason it had to be taken apart, but that fire also destroyed the rear probably third of the hood, um, so all the way back over the, the rear windscreen. And you know, when the car was being sprayed, basically the hood was just sliced off it because uh, nothing was really salvageable and the um, frame was disconnected from the car. So I decided to overhaul this totally. I took all the little components off the frame. I painted it, um, sanded it back, painted it so it was looking good, and then uh, proceeded to fit the hood, uh, which had come with the car. So um, yeah, that was that was a daunting, daunting prospect. Uh, the kind of convertible hoods on some classic cars are really simple. It's just like a bit of fabric stretched over a frame. This one is multi-layer and is actually pretty complex. So it involves basically building the, the hood from the inside out. So first step was to get the headlining on. Um, that's suspended from the frame and you got to use a ton of adhesive and clamps and everything to to get that up then once that's in place um, your next level is the kind of sound deadening and insulation so it's a, a big foam pad wrapped in uh, fabric with kind of webbing running the whole way along it uh, which then again attaches to the frame and ultimately to the the back of the car um, so that provides your sound deadening, but then also that webbing provides the support for your rear window. Now the rear window is held within a metal frame, but with a wooden frame around. So there's actually a few wooden components in this, and those had all 
suffered because of the the fire so i had to had to go and get um get some new parts for that um and get them fit basically get the wood into the metal frame get that stapled to the webbing that is now running the the length of the hood um, and that basically sets the height for your rear window so you have to get that right otherwise the window is going to be in the wrong place and then you put the basically the cover on um, and that that in itself is actually total pain but that's the easy part uh, getting to this point then comes the really daunting bit all those nice new components that you put in you've got to take a knife and you've got to cut through them because uh, you've got to make an opening for the rear window and then attach that to the the frame that goes around it and uh yeah i you know there are a few creases and stuff where maybe there shouldn't be creases but overall i'm really happy with with how it's turned out um the only problem is i haven't been able to get the rear window in turns out it's not really a job for one person and I've been pretty much limited to just me working on this for the last year because of the pandemic so um I'm hoping as things relax I'll be able to get some friends over and we can get that thing in otherwise I'm going to have to find some professionals to do it I did however manage to get the front windscreen on so that was also a total pain again it's supposed to be a two person job but I managed to do it on my own it involved suction pads ratchet straps uh, lots of prying I'm pretty sure I had the dash partly out in order to allow it to happen but it's in there now it's secure and the front's waterproof so the only other job that I've done really on the car has been to get the engine up and running um, it was ticking over when uh, I first got it but it was not the healthiest I think I've nurtured it back to almost as healthy as it's going to be I'll do got a little bit more to do but it is a it is an old engine and it's not actually even the the original engine for the car as I mentioned it came from my old car which reached the point where it wasn't really salvageable but I know some people got benefit from various parts from it so I'm happy enough with that but um, even for that car it wasn't the original engine because I'd sent a I'd sent a piston rod through the case um, while doing a road trip around Ireland so that yeah so this is at least this car this engine's third car um, I have very little information about it it's where it's come from what it's done what mileage it is I just know it kind of runs at the moment it leaks a lot of oil and you know that's that's part of the reason for for wanting to convert it to electric so i'm going to do a separate video on that one just to show you all the steps i had to take to to kind of get it running relatively well even though it's kind of in pieces at the moment so i did get some more modern rubber put on the wheels um the same size as the the classic stuff just the modern equivalent um and yeah should hopefully grip much better than what was on it i do have the uh, hubcaps uh, which i'll be re reinstalling and I actually have about eight of them so I'll choose the best four put them on I do really like the color of these wheels they're obviously not the traditional color but I think they complement the kind of color scheme of the car really well and then in terms of the aesthetics on the outside I'm gonna do up the bumpers as best I can um, these are just plastic trims which are cracked so I've got some new ones of those uh, to put on the car and that should spruce up the front end a little bit then I'm going to do what I can with these trim panels. I've got, I think, most of them, but I will probably ultimately replace them. Um, and I do have some replacements for, for these, which contain kind of the rubber strip for weatherproofing as well as just looking good. They just, they don't do well with age and then they cracked, I think, when they, um, when they got removed. That's basically where we are with the car itself uh, in terms of things that I've done to it. Um, you know in terms of mods it's been the brakes suspension steering wheel and adding the uh, the windscreen washers in terms of restoration it's been 
you know, tidying up the interior, getting that installed, getting the hood installed. Um, and as I'll touch on in, in a future video, getting the, the engine running again. Uh, there's still a few things that I want to do to this car uh, just to, to make it even even better. So one other thing I've done with the interior of the car was the installation of modern seat belts. Um, so you probably saw them when I was showing you around the interior. And I want to put some seat belts in the rear as well because all the mounting points are there. They're just never installed. So I've got some of those to install. Um, I've also got a kit for uh, basically changing the brake pedal feel almost giving it a little bit acting as a, some additional levers within the motion of the pedal travel to make it um, to make the brakes activate with a little bit less force so not quite getting them up to modern standards but making it not as much of a difference uh, when jumping from a modern car into this one so hopefully meaning there's less chance of me you know getting to a point where I'm thinking oh everything's fine and uh, not breaking and being able to brake in time or something like that. Um, obviously we've got some more of the interior components uh, that need to go on and one thing I noticed when I was did manage to take this car for its one test drive last summer was that it being a left-hand drive car in a right-hand drive country um, I was a little bit unhappy with the visibility I had when overtaking um, I didn't have any uh, mirror, wing mirror on the right hand side and you know with the top down there are quite a few blind spots um, that you've got to contend with there so what I've done is I found a part um, actually in Cyprus which is winging its way here now that has the um, the space on it for uh, the wing mirror and all the necessary components to allow me to attach a right hand drive wing mirror to the right of the car and that way I'll have um, kind of modern standard wing mirror on each side of the car which will be a bit of a luxury. Mm -hmm.